Hi, I'm Pastor Paul Marzan, and it's a joy to have you join us today for our Carry the Cross midweek study. And we're on week number four of Carry the Cross and continually reminding people the importance of why it is to carry the cross. We've been discussing um, in each of the small groups as well as on Sunday morning what I call cross stories. And maybe after our video time, you can share a cross story with those around you. There's a sense of, I know, but carrying my cross, I've been learning a lot of things about myself and about those around me. And maybe you've been having the same conversations. Maybe you've given away one of your crosses like I have. Maybe you've had the opportunity to, to share your cross at work or at school. And so share your cross story, good or bad, high or low, and um, maybe ways that you've been able to carry the cross during these last 40 days. We're continuing our conversation around studying of God's word and the reading of God's word. And so for this study, I'm talking less than I'm wanting you to talk more. So as soon as we finish our time together, I want you to continue to read scripture and then break into groups of two or three to discuss those. Or if you have time, read through all the scripture and then come back and discuss them in smaller groups. But the main thing is taking the time to read the scripture out loud, listen to one another, so that you can listen to what God is saying to you this day. We picked it up last week where we kind of finished with talking about Jesus blessing the little children. And then we ended with, and pick it up today on, on Luke chapter um, 18. And we're having um, a kind of this conversation of, um, excuse me, we closed last week with the story of Zacchaeus and um, kind of G Zacchaeus meeting at his house and then the ten servants. So we pick it up today in Luke chapter 19, excuse me, Luke chapter 19, uh, beginning in verse 28. In Luke chapter 19, verse 28, we see where the ministry of Jesus changes dramatically. Where instead of being in Galilee or Samaria or Judea, he's now in Jerusalem. And so in, in this section, Jesus rides into Jerusalem. We see this whole thing that we would reference as Palm Sunday. Now, we're actually celebrating Palm Sunday in a week or so. So if you're watching this video, you'll actually be watching it before we talk about it on Sunday morning a little bit. But I want to put it in the context of the whole understanding of um, holiday seasons or special celebrations. And this, of course, this writing into Jerusalem was a celebration of what's known as uh, Passover or Pashach. And Passover was this understanding that they were re-celebrating or remembering the time of Moses. And so they would gather together around Jerusalem and they would have this festival where they would kind of reenact the story of Moses and the deliverance of the slaves from Egypt. And so a lot of what Jesus was doing was kind of going back and reminding them of the power and the presence of God through Moses is now going to be reestablished through him. And so he's been doing this all along, by the way. Just like Moses gave manna in the desert, Jesus had been giving out the bread of life. And just like uh, you know, Moses said, we need the Passover lamb, if you will, to take away the sins of the world. Jesus comes to take away the sins of the world. And so the symbolism of these sections are very rich. And so as you read them, begin to see them with the eyes of someone who is fulfilling the scriptures. And they're using Moses as a lens, if you will, or a context. So again, we see in um, Luke, Jesus rides into Jerusalem. And if you have the time, you can look at those same passages in Matthew. They're in Mark and they're in John. And they're all very similar. That's, I think, what's really encouraging. It talks about how they, they go to the Mount of Olives and they go to the village ahead of them and they prepare the way of the Lord. They have this young donkey or, or colt. And as he comes, they put their cloaks on the colt and the, their, their cloaks on the, on the ground. And they lay down palm leaves and they take, you know, all these things and they're yelling, Hoshana, Hoshana, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save us, Lord, is what they're shouting out. And so... Some of the Pharisees in the crowd are, are rebuking them and saying, you know, your disciples shouldn't be, you know, calling you God. But Jesus at this point is making what is called his triumphal entry. He's claiming to be the Son of God. Now, if you're watching this video, maybe you've seen the movie Son of God and you kind of know what I'm talking about. That he is often referenced in that movie as kind of a, a blasphemer. And that's what they're referencing here. So Jesus comes in to claim to be the Messiah. But not just the Messiah like a King David are not just the Messiah like a prophet of old. He claims to be God himself. And this is where there's a lot of tension between the religious rulers and Jesus. Even though he has done miracles and he, he teaches as one who is wise, the biggest issue they have is they see him as a blasphemer, someone who claims to be God when they see him as just a teacher. So what happens is right when he gets in there, he goes and does the Norman Vincent Peale thing of making friends and influencing people? <laughs> no. It says right away, beginning in verse 45, you can read that section, he clears the temple and now some see this as a second time he's done it. Um, there's a reference to it again in John. And so 
So there's, a, there's some references. Jesus clears the temple again. So they're going, oh, no, not Jesus again. He comes in and he you know, overturns the money table, calls them a den of robbers and thieves. And part of the reason he does that, of course, is because they were charging extra money, particularly to the poor. The poor who had to buy their, their sacrifices there at the temple were often being cheated and, and charged extra for these small little doves and so forth. Many times they were also like taking... Um, Greek or Roman money that had Herod on it. And they said, well, we don't buy that. You have to exchange it first to a shekel, a Jewish coin, and then use the shekel to buy. And they'd make money on the exchange process as well. And so there was all these kind of shenanigans going on. And so Jesus kind of calls them out on it. And then the religious leaders challenged Jesus' authority. So there's that section where they say, well, who gave you the authority to do these things? And so you'll see those sections there as well. He tells the parable of the wicked tenants and just talks about those that are not doing what God would have in the vineyard. The religious leaders again question of Jesus, and this time they try to trip him up by asking about taxes. And again, Jesus comes back with a great response. Again, they question Jesus, and this time they come to him about the resurrection. And again, he has to clarify the difference. And again, he has, there's the two ruling parties. We've talked about this before. There's the Pharisees and there's the Sadducees. And the Sadducees are sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection. So it's interesting, they're the ones that come to Jesus to try to trip him up. They're going to say, ha, we're going to prove to you there's no resurrection. Who are you going to marry when you go to heaven? See, you can't. And then he goes and explains this in a way that it kind of confounds them. And then the religious leaders come, and they, so Jesus throws a question back at them, but they can't answer it. So he kind of stupefies them, so to speak, so they have to be quiet. And then at the section of his dialogue with religious leaders, he warns them, gives them this really staunch warning. At the section after that, we see where all of a sudden you see the poor widow, and it's called the, the widow's mite or uh, the widow's offering. But in that section, we see where this, this woman, who is, again, we've talked about widows already, but has very little, is very poor, destitute, if you will. She comes in and she puts in two copper coins, which were probably the last of the money she had. Some even say that two copper coins were what was needed to bury someone, that she maybe even gave up her burial money, so that if she died tomorrow from lack of food, she gave all that she had to God. And so Jesus tells um, about the future. He has some predictions there about the temple and things that are going to happen. And here's one of his phrases I, I cling to sometimes when I'm struggling with the future. Just like I love this section on worry. He says in verse 14 in chapter 21, But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how I will defend you. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. So much of our time we spend in worrying ahead of time. He says, do not worry beforehand. So Jesus talks about his return, what that's going to look like. And then he goes and tells them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. And so he does this in the form of a parable. And then he says, remain watchful. Remain watchful. So that's enough for you to read it tonight and, or today and begin to have those meaningful conversations that you need to have. So I'd encourage you to grab your cross at this time. We're going to pray together and then turn it loose for you to read those scriptures and have those conversations. So let's pray together today. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this serious carry of the cross to remind us to daily deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and to follow you. Help us this day to, to, to really take that to heart, to share our cross stories in church and in our small groups and in other ways, to continue to remember what it is to reach out in love and acceptance. And like Jesus, who went to, all the way to Jerusalem to, to do some tough things on our behalf, Help us remember to how we can celebrate the Passover, how we can celebrate Easter coming up, how we can come to the cross experience open-hearted and open-handed to continue to, to share the love of Jesus Christ with others. We just pray for all these things in your name this day. Amen.